What up, y'all? It's your guy Dawson from DD TV. Thank you for rating, commenting, and subscribing. Everybody who's donated, those of you all who will, all of that information is in the description box below. Also, go over to my other YouTube channel, Dawson Speaks TV. Make sure you subscribe over there and hit that little bell so you get notifications when I drop a new video. Now, let's get into this topic. All right, now this video is for educational purposes, so as I approach this topic with respect, I need you all to please, please, please be respectful in my comment section. Thanks. All right, thank you all for tuning in. Now, I wanted to do an update on a story that most of you all heard here first. You all remember the story I did at the beginning of the year of Minister of Music Rupert Houghton out of Richmond, Virginia. Rupert led the group R. Timothy Houghton and renewed he also won many gospel awards in the Richmond area. Family and friends talked highly of Rupert. As a matter of fact, Rupert's father stated in an interview with ABC 8 News that Rupert was such an inspiration. Everywhere he went, people talked good about him. Which is why it came as a shock to family and friends when Rupert lost his life at the hands of a young man named Zakel Johnson. Some of Rupert's friends told ABC News that Rupert and Zakel knew each other. Rupert's murder was the first homicide of 2022 in Richmond, Virginia. Now, just recently, Zakel Johnson learned his fate. On October 24, 2022, during a hearing at the Richmond City Circuit Court, 28-year-old Zakel Johnson pled guilty to second-degree murder for the death of 36-year-old Rupert Houghton. Zakel will spend 25 years in prison. Now I'm going to let you all watch this video and I'll be back with the rest of my commentary and you all know me, I'm Dawson and I won't hold back. Thank you. First of four, 28-year-old Zakel Johnson will spend 25 years in prison for Richmond's first homicide of 2022. He pled guilty to killing Rupert Houghton on Grace Street back on January 14th. Johnson was actually sentenced to 40 years on the second-degree murder charge. 18 of those were suspended. He got an additional three years for use of a firearm. All right, y'all, let's go in. Now, first of all, I want to send my condolences out to the family and friends of Rupert Houghton. He was beloved in that community, and I know that you all miss him terribly. Now, let me say this. Zakel Johnson is a cold-blooded murderer, and he should have gotten the full 40 years. However, I'm glad that he did plead guilty instead of dragging this case out, thus putting more hurt and stress on Rupert's family and friends. Now, when I did the first video, I told you all how Rupert was well known in the gospel music area in New York, also in uh, Richmond, Virginia. Rupert also was a behavioral analyst at Mending Fences LLC. He was always helping people. Zakel also was an aspiring artist. However, Zakel at the time of Rupert's murder was broke. Just a week before the situation with Rupert, Zakel posted on Facebook, Can I borrow 20 bucks from all of my family? I'm really in need, please. And then he gives his cash app and he says, I love you all. Friends can also, anything helps. Zakel needed money. Even though he took pictures, him and a friend, you know, posting money that they have money and they're balling, that was all a front because he really didn't have anything. And I'm telling you all, when I was doing my research on this, um, I was looking on Zakel, all of his social media platforms. He posted everywhere trying to get his music out there. And then there were, you know, uh, videos of him drinking and sometimes smoking. And I'm like, man, you're up here front in front of everybody on all these social media sites, but you need money. And obviously you're not getting any money from being for being on social media. So go get a job. You are a grown man. Go get a job. They're hiring somewhere. Now, the news station, nor did Rupert's friends, go into what kind of friendship Rupert and Zakel had. But I said this before, and I'm going to say it again. Rupert was established, and I truly believe that Rupert was helping Zakel. And Rupert got tired of helping this grown man, and he couldn't do it anymore, and things went left. Now, I know some of my subscribers are saying, Dawson, this story is almost like the one you reported a couple weeks ago out in Beaumont, Texas with Pastor Jason West and Shannon Arduan. And I'll say, yes, it is. And I'll say now what I said on that video. You can't help everyone. Let these grown people find their way. Let these grown people find their way. Oh, Dawson, well, if I don't help them, nobody ain't going to help them and I don't want them to go down. Well, what would they do if you weren't there? They'd find a way. They'll find a way. 
They find a way when they want to meet up with people on these dating apps and have sex. They know how to meet up with people and do whatever they want to do and go to clubs and parties. Come on, y'all. They know how to go and get their liquor and their drinks and go go do the things they want to do, but they don't do the things they need to do because their priorities are not in order. And you're sitting there being some grown man or some grown woman's parent. Come on. It ain't your job to raise no man or no grown woman. Sometimes the pit, the pit is what people need to pick their own selves up. Oh, Dawson, you being mean. No, I'm not. I'm being real. And I'm trying to prevent another situation of someone losing their life trying to help a grown person whose own parents couldn't do nothing with them. Think, ma'am. Think, sir. If their parents and their family can't help them or won't have anything to do with them, what you going to do? Take a breath. Some of these individuals will run from pillar to post looking for somebody, anybody who will give them the most. Whatever that most is, you fill in the blank. Now, usually in my messages, I'm always telling, you know, the women to be careful, the men too. But I, you know, I kind of, you know, tell the women because I know in churches and in society, the people who get hurt the most are women and children. But today I'm talking to the brothers because some of you are falling in the same traps. Y'all know what I'm saying. Some of you men in the church, like some of these women who have opened up their hearts, open up their houses, open up their car doors, open up their pocketbooks, trying to help these men out. Some of you men, not all of you, are doing the same. And you're doing it under the guise of I'm trying to help a brother out. And we know that's not true. No, I'm not saying that's what happened in this particular situation, but I'm just saying it's happening. People are sending me stories. I'm in the social work field. I've been in court, heard stories. When the truth comes out of what's really going on, people don't want to talk about it. They want to sweep it under the rug. That's why I have a show. I got tired. Of seeing people, families hurt. People come, everybody sweeping it under the rug and everybody go home and nobody, you know, we go back to work. No, it's something going on and nobody is telling people the truth. That's why I have my show. Somebody got to tell you the truth, ma'am, sir. I'm serious. Somebody has to be bold enough to tell you the truth, even if you don't like it. I didn't get on social media because I don't have friends. I didn't come down here to meet some celebrities and have them retweet my stuff. As you can see, I'm doing pretty good all by myself with God being my PR person. All right. Y'all need people who can get in your life and tell you the truth and they don't want nothing from you. And some of you men are trying to help these women out. And you have an ulterior motive. I done helped you. I, what you going to do for me? Bro, well, you, you should have helped her out because you saw she was down and out. Her and her kids, you know, they needed help. You gave them money because you wanted something in return and you're in the church doing this. This stuff is happening, y'all. And they're not going to talk about it in churches. That's why I got my own YouTube channel so I can say what I want to say, how I want to say it. I know I'm telling the truth. And for some of you men, the stress that you're going through. In your relationships, man, she treat me like I'm a kid. Don't talk to me that way. A lot of that is because she's sunning you because you don't have your own. You didn't come with your own. You living with her in her apartment, in her townhouse, in the house that's in her name. Nothing in there has your name on that paperwork. That's where the frustration comes in. eh? Somebody has to tell you the truth. When I was a young and coming up. <laughs> I used to see these guys who used to always live on their girlfriends. And when she got tired of him, she kicked him out, threw all this stuff out. I say, that ain't going to never happen. (laughs) Come on, y'all. Can we be real? That ain't going to never happen to me. Aren't you tired of her throwing your stuff out in the middle of the road, sir? Come on, bro. You better than that. Your daddy didn't tell you. None of the men in your family tell you, but I'm going to tell you. You're better than that, man. Get your own stuff. I'm happy that Zakel has gone to prison for 25 years. He should have got the 40 years. But I got I got frustrated with seeing him on all these social media sites. Because you see these men. I'm talking to the men today. Out here on social media, I'm doing this. I'm doing this. Holding up money. I'm doing me and my friends. We balling. We this. But when you start peeling the layers back, you ain't got nothing. Not all of the men, but some of them. And no one's telling y'all the truth. 
Looking at Zakel all on these social media sites, it was on Twitter, he was talking about how bad he wanted a girl and how he needed sex so bad. And I was taught by men who took care of their business that if you chase the money legally, legally, if you get the money, you'll get the honey. You ain't got no money, that's why you ain't getting no honey. And then if you want your honey to last, certainly you're going to do it legally. I don't get where these young men like Zakel and grown men and old men older than me, they commit all these crimes. And then they get sentenced to years in prison. Oh, I don't mind doing two years, three years, five, 10, 15 years. I do that time. And I come on, man. Come on, man. You boasting about going to prison. You don't mind going to prison. Ain't no women in there. It's a damn sausage fest. Now, look, I'm getting messy. Look, I'm out of here. I'm out of here. Let me get out of here. But let me say this, man. If you're around people who their life is going in a downward spiral, you got to get away from certain people. And even if you have to be by yourself, man, get by yourself. Get around people who are doing something with their life. Even if it's some family members you got to get away from. I'm serious. Because all these men going to cr prison for crimes that they did commit. I know somebody saying, Dawson, well, we got to talk about, you know, the school to prison pipeline. And sometimes it's the environment. I understand all that. I'm in the social work field. I know that. But I'm going to tell you, there's been times with the clients that were on my caseload. I've had to pull them to the side and say, bro, what's going on? All this going in and out of jail, in and out of prison. When is it going to stop? And you're somewhere off in prison for two to three, five years. And you get mad at a woman who's home. You want her to wait for you while you're doing time. That's unfair. Now, I'm telling you all, revisiting this story and seeing Zakel's social media platform really aggravated me. It got me worked up, y'all. I was upset because I've come across, like I said, on my caseload or just people in society that I've met. And they can't get it together. These young men and older men, too. It's like you didn't do it in your 20s. You didn't do it in your 30s. Come on, your 40s and your 50s. At least do something right, bro. Turn it around. Ah, And I got the platform to talk about it. Now, I'm off of this topic for real. Rest in peace, Rupert Hodden. Again, my condolences go out to his family and his friends. Until next time, you guys, take care of yourself and each other. Get down in the comments and let me know what you think of this video. Peace.